good morning look at all the weeds in my pumpkin patch it's not only pumpkins over here it's acorn squash butternut squash spaghetti squash and pumpkins but so I have a new development I'm gonna start with the bad news first <clears throat> So there is something called a squash vine borer and most of you guys probably if you've ever seen you've probably seen it before it looks like a bee or what we think is a bee but it's not a bee it's actually a moth and it lays little tiny eggs they kind of amber colored eggs there go one right there and what they do is they go to they find the base of your plant and they lay eggs and the eggs once they hatch they are white they look like grubs and once they hatch they feed off of your plant that is not a bee that is a moth and it lays something that does this to your plant what's in there is called a squash vine borer it eats through the base of your plant and works its way up stripping your plant of all its nutrients all the moistness out of the plant and one of the ways to tell when your plant is has one of these is when your leaves start looking like this even though you water them <clears throat> so what you can do is you can take a razor and a lot of people don't take the time out to do this but you can take a razor and you can cut off the leaves that look like they're infected this leaf right here is from the same plant hasn't been infected yet but because it's the base of the plant has been infected the this will eventually become infected and it's not a disease it's just the actual insect inside feeding off of the plant until it can grow wings and become like its parent another moth um so you can cut the plant open in some parts and you can find it and then you can pack the plant with dirt some kind of wet moist dirt and um, the best thing about the squash plant is it grows roots wherever it touches the ground in the little um, corners so if I put that in the dirt and put mud or I mean not mud put dirt around it water it on a daily basis if I come back and move the dirt from off of that that's gonna be rooted to the ground and it'll give my plant a better chance of surviving since the main root is already dying off again this is from a moth the this is from a the a larva of a moth it's called a squash vine borer and so that's the bad news the good news is it's catchable as long as you get it you know if you still have leaves that look like this then you can catch it and you can take care of it which I'm gonna do today I got a lot to do today so the good news is this plant seems like it might have the same issue going on but it not so much but I am getting butternut squash producing so a lot of times the plant won't even produce once they get a hold of it but this plant is producing butternut squash like crazy let me see if I can get a better shot of that so I'm happy about that. My biggest one, I covered up because I didn't want anything to, um, I didn't want anything to get it, but I covered it up down here. And I'm gonna cover up the rest of them, but it already looked like a butternut squash. I covered up two of them, but this one didn't make it. And the pumpkins are having the same issue. All of these are little bitty butternut squash. They all, if I pollinate them, they'll all grow up to be butternut squash. This is how one that didn't get pollinated looks. If it didn't get pollinated, it'll get turned brown and die off. And that's just, that's just mean either you didn't hand pollinate them or the bees didn't make it out to pollinate it. But look. This is the pumpkin and I have the squash vine board. I got to this too. 
and it had just started to give me um, some little round pumpkins on it. They in the thicket down there somewhere. If I'll see one, I'll pull it out. But, okay, I made those little pouches for the watermelon and I had to come back and reinforce them with some small, with some chicken wire too because um, I caught a mouse, but not before he ate a hole in one of the watermelons and killed it from the inside out. And he bit a hole through the plastic right there he went in and he killed it that was the biggest watermelon now this is the biggest watermelon but let's see if he make it through this I tore the fence down because all these watermelon were growing out of control I need to cut them back oh and these watermelon cuttings somebody can replant this and this can become a whole nother watermelon plant for them so um one didn't make it because I cut it off and then it started to die but I already had a big watermelon on the end of it and you're really not supposed to have more than one watermelon on the same vine because one will just suck all the energy from the other one so I cut this one yesterday and now the baby watermelon on it was starting to die I was gonna lose it anyways because it was smaller than the biggest one that was over there so that big one was going to take all the nutrients from it so I was gonna lose it anyways I put a stocking over this one to see if it'll do better with keeping bugs from be getting in here. And then I put the um, chicken wire on it to see if it'll keep any pests out of it. But I did catch one, so I know it's a mouse. And now that I don't have a cat anymore, they might try to invade. I, uh... I gated up that watermelon too and that one down there. So I have one, two, three, four, five. I have five watermelon left so far. Out of the seven I think I had first. And then I see some baby ones growing, but I'll see if they're gonna make it or not. This cage or this trellis is um it had water, it had sugar baby watermelon on it and we lost all of them. There is a baby one growing and I'm on the other side of the fence so I can't get to it but there's two baby ones growing down here. So I'm going to try to see if I can get to them and protect them. Yesterday my mom was pulling up sweet potatoes. Y'all can go see that on my on my uh my profile. But um the other thing was these, these, um, this is the plant, this is a flower, and it is so pretty, how okra starts, and it's a bug in there, I don't know what kind of bug that is, but it's a pollinator, I know that, so it's a good bug, and a bee keep trying to get in there, but he don't want to get in there beside this little green bug, so, but it's a pollinator, and um, he'll basically take his sweet time, but he'll go from one, he ha I think it's a grasshopper, it looks like a grasshopper, but he'll try to eat parts of the stem of the plant, and then he'll jump and come to another flower, which I don't know where the other ones are right now, but I have okra just about every day now, coming off my plants, that one is pretty big, which I try not to let them get that big, because they get tough, but they're still edible, they just get a little tougher need to cook a little longer but I'm getting okra off these plants every day and it's never I, I planted another round of these I'll pick the big ones later on today it's quite a few of them out here but I'll pick them later on today after I finish doing whatever work I need to do but But you can plant another round of these to have what they call successional planting and harvesting. But I'm about to take a lot of this fencing down. Let's go another um, okra plant. Maybe some more okra. 
So I think I'm gonna make me some black peas and okra tonight because I already have some in the freezer that I picked. And now what I picked today should be enough for me to have a meal. This is the, um, the beginning of a eggplant. A fruit, the fruit from an eggplant. And it looked like something was trying to nibble on it. So, but all these little flowers, they'll um, make their own eggplants. The fruit from an eggplant. So yeah, and I think I'm about to plant me some more zucchini, but right now the garden is looking beat because the sun is beaming down on it. Oh, it's time to remove the the cucumbers. They they had their last little row out. I'm gonna see if I can remove all of this and maybe plant some more cucumbers at the base and see if I can get another crop from before the year is out, but I don't know. Can you sprinkle mothballs throughout the garden to keep the mice away? Yeah, some people do that, and you can tell when they um, do it because you walk around, walk, walk past their backyards and stuff, and you can smell it from the alley. And it'll help, but I don't want to because I don't want to smell that all the time. Um, but I was thinking about cayenne pepper around the base of the fence. If it, you know what, I mean, if I have to, I will put mothballs outside the, the base of, you know, the base of the fence. <clears throat> but I don't want to have to put it inside. I don't want to smell that. They need to make a mothball that don't smell so bad, but still have the same, you know, the same effect. But that's a good idea, though. Oh no, I haven't seen uh, the picture of forks buried in the ground. I'll have to look that up on YouTube. What do they do? They they just plant them at the base. They just stick them at the base all around their fence. The watermelon, the sugar baby watermelon still haven't, you know, still giving me flowers, which is always a good sign to let you know that the plant is not dead yet and it will still you know, you'll still get flowers out of it. It will still provide fruit. You just gotta keep taking care of it. <clears throat> These little flowers are the males. When you see a female, it'll usually have a small little replica of how the fruit looks when it's a baby. I mean, when it's a grown up, it's just a small replica of how it looks when it's a grown up. But yeah, so this was my biggest watermelon. Is no, it's, it, it's no longer the biggest. That's the biggest over there, but I'm gonna get rid of this today. I left it out here for a few days because I needed to get those two, those two protected over here and this one protected. The other two down there were already protected, but I left this one out here in case it came back so he can feast off this one while it gave me some time to get these other ones taken care of. I'll send you a pic. Yeah, Auntie Becky, send me a picture of that so I can see what you're talking about. Another thing that I try to do, because a lot of people say gardening, gardening is expensive, I try to find the most inexpensive way, but still effective way to garden. Like a lot of people put all these trellises and stuff up. This is just plastic fence roll from Lowe's or Home Depot or Walmart. And it only costs like five bucks sometimes, depending on how big of a roll you get. And your cucumbers can grow up there. These are called cucamelons. They're a tinier version of a cucumber. And supposed to be a lot sweeter. I've never tasted one. This is my first time growing it, but we already got some tiny ones on there. They're supposed to get about as big as a um, look, about as big as a, uh, the what's those um, olives? About as big as an olive. Look at him. But I need to take all these all this watermelon and down, and I need to I need to cut it all back because it's growing over my pumpkin patch, and the pumpkin's trying to grow, but the watermelon's taking over. So I'm gonna take my fencing down. I bought, I bought some more, and I'm gonna buy some I'm gonna buy some more of this. I bought some of the tinier stuff that go on the back, but I'm gonna buy some more of this so I can close this back in, and I'm just gonna have to keep them cut back because you can have a smaller watermelon plant and it'll still produce 
a lot of watermelon as opposed to having this big jungle out here taken away from all the nutrients that's going into the fruit so it's better to have it's better to to prune what is what they call it prune your plant back anyways but yeah i just like these little baby butternut squash they are so cute to me and i cannot wait to see these get bigger i'm actually excited to start seeing some of the um spaghetti squash but right now the butternuts are doing way better than anything this is an acorn so once i get this taken care of then this plant should start producing i got to get all these weeds out of here today so that's what's on my agenda for today plus puppy love i gotta take care of hannah and gizmo come here gizmo hey gizmo no the geckos don't really bother the plants i found out uh it's mostly the squash vine borers and the mice from the alley and from that field down there is what I have to worry about. The cooler it get, I'm going to have to start preparing my backyard and the house anyways to make sure nothing from the outside coming in to get warm. So, I mean, I think that's something everybody needs to do. But, but with that field being right down the way, I definitely need to do it because... I don't intend on um, providing free room and board for any any of these little creatures out here. This thing, this cucumelon plant, is found is found its way down and back up on this side, and that's what this is. <clears throat> and if you let it, it'll keep growing all over. But. They are everywhere on this plant, so very tiny too. I'm excited to I'm excited to see how this is gonna turn out. You ready to go in the house? It's hot out here. Come on. Let me let y'all say hi to the Hannah Banner. Hannah. 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 Hey Hannah. They, they dreading that they have to get a bath today, but it's gonna happen. Oh, update on the lemon plant. Oh, look, I don't know if y'all can see this, but a spider just spun a web right in my face. Ugh, Ooh, it's thick. But um, <clears throat> my mom ain't taking care of these. And so they're not turning into lemons like they should. And I haven't been taking care of my blueberry bush, so every time it gets some new growth on it, I stop taking care of it, and then it just becomes stagnant and stay there. You can tell when it ain't being taken care of because it's all overgrown. And it's not really hard. That's just how easy the weeds come out of here because the soil down here is super loose because I keep, I keep good soil in here and mulch and stuff. I just don't get out here and take care of it like I need to. Yes, Audra, I did get that recipe, and I haven't had a chance to try it yet because of the little catastrophe I had with the puppies, but I will be trying that pretty soon. I will definitely be trying that recipe. Thank you very much for that. I thought I texted you and told you thank you for that. Maybe I didn't. I'm sorry. But, yeah, I thought that was cute. I want to get a little scrapbook for recipes and I want to put that in there. That'll be my first recipe that I receive from somebody. I have little recipes that I save from my mom and you know, stuff like that. So, but I think that'd be cute to start up a little recipe book. All right, y'all, that's about it. I got a lot of work to do. If anybody want to come help me do this work, you are more than welcome to. I will give you some okra. I will give you one of the watermelon when they become ripe. Um, I'll tell, I'll uh, persuade my mom to give you some of her um, sweet potatoes. When the butternut squash come in, you can come pick a pumpkin. Look, here's another one. This is a different color, but that is a squat. That is a moth. That is not a bee. So, all right, y'all. See y'all later.